I hated myself. I hated what I had become. Uh, I was absolutely addicted to uh, pornography, sexual addiction, um, and there was no way out. Spiritually, I'm, I'm just in, internally, I'm in turmoil. It seems like the focus of all, all my prayers and my, my spiritual devotional life is that, God, can you forgive me for this? You know, what's, what's wrong with me? Why can't I stop this? Once I found out access to certain places where I could get it for free, it progressed quite quickly. Within a couple of months, I was a, I, what I define as a fully blown addicted to pornography. The, the sexual addiction, I didn't realize was really, you know, I was in denial and didn't know that this was wrong. The things that were happening in my marriage, they did start from day one. You know, when we talk about sexual addiction, there's a range. I mean, you could be zero to 10, zero hardly any at all, and 10 just massively addicted. So wherever you are on this continuum, uh, I was at a certain place. I wouldn't call myself sexually addicted, but I would certainly say I was sexually preoccupied from time to time through every week. There wasn't a week that would go by that I'd, somebody didn't attract my attention, and then my mind would work, and, and so on and so forth. So. That's where I was. I don't know where you are, but I want to give you a lot of hope. And I want to challenge you. I want you to see that blessed are the pure in heart, for they are the ones that are going to see God, as Jesus said. And so I love the idea of seeing the body of Jesus Christ growing and becoming free from addictions and, and just excited about the power of the Holy Spirit within us. In fact, when you think of it, just the one verse in Galatians 5.13 says, Jesus says he gave us power through the Holy Spirit. When he left to be back with the Father, he sent his Spirit, giving us power so that we don't use our power, our freedom, for sexual pleasures or for sinful pleasures, but to use our freedom to love each other by serving one another. That's it. That's the essence of life, loving God loving and serving each other. That's what I'm calling you to do. So I'm thrilled that I have a part to share my own testimony. Here's how it goes. Throughout a period of two or three years trying to struggle with understanding how Christ and his word frees people, I was discovering through Colossians 3, 1 through 17, that God uses his living word powerful word, word that's sharper than a two-edged sword, to purify our lives. Well, I didn't even realize what I was doing at first, but I actually memorized Colossians 3, 1 through 17, and I said it over and over and over again, and I discovered an amazing secret right from God's word that we've had for thousands of years. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, God says that you and I are going to be successful, successful over addiction, successful in what we do, what we say, in a number of areas of our life, when we brand God's word on our heart. And in that context, it was love God, our king, our boss, our Lord, with all of our hearts, crave him, diligently seek him every day with our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. So I was doing that without even realizing what was going on, and I was finding success in my life. I memorized Romans 5, 3 through 5. And what that says is that when we get hit by trials, and of course addictions are leading to trials, or you're in the middle of a trial, but all of our trials are like trophies or, or bouquets of roses given to us by life that we lift up to God in praise and say, God, thank you for this trial because I get endurance and patience, God's character. I get hope and hope is never disappointed because the love of God is poured into my heart through the Holy Spirit. I mean, I came to a place when that verse, those three verses right there in Romans, when they reached my heart, I saw myself changing. And I went, wow. So I, it became like an exciting experiment for me. I was like the guinea pig, you know, like a spiritual guinea pig. And so I started looking at my life and thinking, well, can I get other areas and other scriptures in my heart and see what happens? And then I saw, oh, Matthew 12, Matthew 15, where Jesus said, out of our heart, it's our spiritual heart, 
flows the wellspring of, of uh, no, out of our spiritual heart flows our thoughts, our, our, our words, and our, and our actions. And then, and then Solomon said, out of our heart flows the wellspring of who we are. Uh, Proverbs 4.23. So I said, there's so much about the heart. What is this thing? <laughs> and then I read, and then I read Romans um, 10, 9, and 10. Oh, and then, I, then I, my mind and heart and everything just exploded because listen to what happened when I read this. If we say with our mouth that Jesus is our King, our Lord, if we believe in our heart that uh, God raised him from the dead, we're saved. That's worth it all by itself. But then it says, what, as man believes in his heart, the result is righteousness. Well, righteousness is living like Christ. A righteous life is a reflection of God. So I thought, oh, you mean my beliefs result in, a, in righteousness? So then I realized that our beliefs, yours and mine, reside in our heart, our spiritual heart. And so I thought, well, if I begin to hide God's word in my heart, I won't sin against God. Psalm 119. I went, oh. And to me, it was like the greatest insight I've ever discovered. And then I began to experiment. And so then one day in Orlando, Florida, I'm just walking in the morning in a normal walk of the day. I, I happened to uh, run into a, another person walking the exact opposite way. And she was like in her 20s. She was gorgeous, unbelievable build, just, you know, hair. And I was just stunned by her beauty. And when she walked by me, of course, my neck bent all the way around, you know. And I'm sure I said something like, well, God, you really did a great job there. But what really fascinated me, I was 65 years old at the time. And what fascinated me was that within 100 steps, I was actually lusting and imagining and being involved with her sexually. And so I stopped in the middle of my imagination and I simply said to God, I said, Lord, uh, I'm really, really tired of my lustful mind being the way it's been for as long as I can remember. And, and, and so, and I know, I know why now, but I said, God, I, I don't really wanna do that anymore. And so I said, am I always gonna be like this? And then Jesus' word popped into my, my mind. Smalley, didn't I just tell you in my word today that out of your heart, out of the beliefs in your heart, flow your thoughts, your words, and your actions? And I said, yes, that's right, God. So what belief in my heart, spiritual heart, is um, causing these thoughts? I didn't take another 10 steps. He spoke to me and said, Smalley, just look at your past. From five years of age, no supervision as a kid, I got involved in a garage deal with other kids my age. Some of the girls were older, and we were playing all these little, you know, kid sexual games. But we did so many weird things because we were totally unsupervised. That's why you have to make sure you help guard your children's heart. Because what happened to me is that I started this experimenting process and did it the rest of my life until I was 65 because God freed me then. But until then, the old program ran in my brain every day and, and it was all because of a belief I had in my heart. Here's what it was. I learned at an early age that life is pleasurable, exciting, fun, thrilling, you know, amazing. That's the definition of hedonism. And I was a hedonist. And I, I could say, hi, I'm Gary Smalley. I'm a recovering hedonist. I mean, that's really what it was, as simple as it is. Because when you have a deep, it'd be like the size of this red section in my heart where it was like, I want to be thrilled today. I want to be pleasured today. And, and that was my belief that that's what life is. I confessed that to God. I said, Lord, I don't want that belief. I want your beliefs. I want your word to be in my heart. I don't want the world. I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And whatever you and I think about all day long reaches our spiritual heart as a belief before long. And then that controls us. So we're in charge of this. We manage this. So what I did, I got back to my room. I talked this over with my wife, incidentally. We looked in the scripture. We found Galatians 5. That's all about um, the flesh and the spirit warring against each other. And then verse 13, as I already mentioned, I've been given freedom by Christ. 
but I don't want to use this freedom anymore for sexual sin, sexual pleasure. I don't want to. I want to use his freedom to love people by serving them. That's, that's the second greatest commandment. That's what I want. And so I started praying every day, and I memorized that verse that day. I said it over and over, morning, middle of the day, noon, sat down, driving in the car. I repeated back with the meaning of the verse all day long for two weeks, just like I have the other few verses that I've hidden in my heart. I say them over and over again every day. And <sighs> Psalm 1, if you delight in his law, which is loving him and others, Day and night, all that you do will prosper. Mm. So two weeks, I only did that for two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Just think of it, two weeks. I was in a jacuzzi with uh, my granddaughter in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and uh, playing with her, splashing. Into the room walked two real Barbie dolls with strings on. They headed towards the jacuzzi. The first thought that came to my mind was, I wonder if they know how much God loves them. <laughs> and I thought, well, I've never had a thought like that. My second thought, I wonder if their daddy loved them when they were growing up. Third, does their husband, if they're married, love them the way Christ loves the church? Whoa. I went, wow. When I got back to my room, I just sat in my chair. I prayed to the Lord. I said, I don't know what you're doing, but this seems so powerful to me. And what I've discovered is that I've been able to just look at my life now, see what things in my life don't reflect Christ, and I just go to him and I say, God, direct me to some section of your word. Powerful, living, powerful, two-edged sword, your word. Show me it. I'll memorize it. I'll meditate it on Jeremiah 15, 16. I found God's word. I chewed on it like food until it became a delight to my heart. I love this stuff. Changes you, it re-transforms you. His Holy Spirit, what he did on the cross, the power of his word. Addiction, it's gone. That's my challenge to you. Take this seriously. His word is alive and available to you today. Okay, that's my most exciting story of my life. It's my water to wine miracle that I never get tired of sharing. And I know every time you share it at seminars and conferences, guys come up to me like crazy. Mm -hmm. And they come up to me sharing how much they were blessed by that, encouraged by it. They find hope in it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's their struggle as well. Mm -hmm. And it's every man's struggle. A professor at Dallas Seminary mm -hmm. always shared, Howard Hendricks, that either you struggle with lust mm -hmm. or you've got another problem. Mm -hmm. When I was in the sixth grade, I was, um, that was my first exposure to um, pornography. I was about five years old, and I was with my older brother and his friends at a friend's house, and they had shown me a picture. I, I never had the sex talk as a kid, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning about sexuality, you know, through this whole process. Pornography becomes a part of this, you know. See, at eight years old, I was molested. This wasn't a family member. This was uh, uh, an outside predator. I was raped at 12 and by a group of boys and couldn't tell anybody. My parents would not have understood and it, and it just wasn't safe. It wasn't a safe place to go. And I just recall being extremely curious, just being on fire sexually. Um, he was charming. Um, I probably was intimate before God's plan and was already tied in before I could put the brakes on. My wife and I were drifting further and further apart as she poured more and more energy into the kids. She's not nearly as interested in sex as I was. I, I gave my heart to the Lord as a teenager. And at the same time, I'm, you know, there's a secret that I have too because I've, been, I've seen this stuff. And my eyes were open to so much more. And, and yet at the same time, there's this internal spiritual struggle.